Hello and welcome to the debate. I'm your host, Anna Makhoud, with you at PTV World. In today's show, we're going to be taking a look at two important stories. The first is, of course, in reference to what is going on regarding, of course, the political situation of the country, given the upcoming general elections and the announcement of the limitations uh, by the ECP. Uh, the, of course, uh, the way that this has been done is something that is going to be interesting and of course how it's going to proceed forward is something that we'll explore in further detail as well. The announcement of the preliminary delimitations by the ECP is something that has brought forward uh, the number of uh, the seats that uh, remain unchanged according to the 25th Amendment, which is down to 336 from 342. And since, of course, uh, initially there were discussions around the Constitution Amendment required uh, towards a change in the number of seats, uh, this perhaps caters to that problem as well. There are, of course, changes. Um, in the uh, relevant number of National Assembly and Provincial Assembly seats according to the new census results. And then, of course, the way that different districts have been clubbed together for their representation in both the uh, National Assembly and the Provincial Assemblies. It's going to be interesting exactly what um, sort of uh, reservations, if any, are going to be raised um, towards the seat limitations for which a number of uh, days have been given by the ECP. Um, and we're going to be, of course, also uh, witnessing what sort of action is going to be taken by both parties and individuals with regards to these delimitations. The process was done 14 days earlier to make sure that the time frame that has been earlier given by the ECP is something that is actually fulfilled and then of course that there is uh, th not much uncertainty around when exactly the elections are going to be. However, there are still uh, many uh, who are talking about uh, the fact that under one pretext or the other, there still can possibly be a delay in the upcoming polls. So we're going to be talking about that in our show as well. And the impact that these new delimitations will have um, on the way that different uh, districts are going to be represented and different political parties are going to be represented as well. So we're going to be taking a look at that in the first segment of the show. Our next one is going to be taking a look at the stance given uh, by the Foreign Office and the Foreign Minister uh, speaking about the fact that Pakistan's stance on Israel-Palestine is not something that has witnessed um, any change and that the stance remains the same as it was previously as well. And the statement comes uh, amidst reports uh, concerning around uh, what uh, the Israeli leadership has uh, said in the recent UN General Assembly session um, that uh, there have been instances where many Muslim countries have shown their willingness and interest uh, to uh, develop ties with Israel. And of course, it's something that previously also was discussed towards Pakistan, where Pakistan has reiterated that the stance remains unchanged. And uh, whatever it is that they're eventually uh, going to decide in the future, it will always be in line with Pakistan's national interests. And so this is something that remains as it was clear as before. Um, and so there needs to be no confusion on the matter. But we'll talk about why this is something that is being discussed and was done so previously as well. And what sort of impact will uh, the other um, uh, potential Muslim countries who may actually uh, develop their ties uh, with Israel um, is going to have on the rest of the Muslim world and, of course, uh, the international politics as well. For this and more, as always, in the studios, I've been joined by senior analysts Baru Fatafi and Raja Faisal for our first segment regarding the delimitations by the ECB. I've been joined by Dr. Niaz Murtaza, who's a senior political analyst, and Ms. Badul Rajput, senior journalist. Thank you very much uh, for joining us and being a part of the discussion. Let me start with you, Dr. Niaz. The um, discussion, of course, around the delimitations was something um, that we have done before as well, and many were, uh, of course, eyeing exactly what sort of uh, numbers we're going to be taking a look at and the representation in different provinces and the National Assembly. Um, it seems that the ECB um, was able to move ahead of the reservation of any sort of constitutional amendment required um, and move ahead with 336 seats. Um, and then also in terms of different districts, it seems that they um, what they have said is that they have uh, conducted these delimitations in line um, with, with the requirements, in line um, with the uh, kind of ethical and logical guidelines that remain and I want your take on exactly what would be your first perspective when you take a look at these delimitations and numbers emerging out of it. Do you think that this is a process that has been uh, streamlined as best as possibly could? Uh, you know we have to you know place <coughs> this whole debate in you know the larger debate about you know the timeliness of elections. So you know uh, there is the fact that you know the constitution required elections within 90 minutes and it's not clear that delimitation was required. So I well, think the first chance. 90 <laughs> minutes, Dr. Niaz, will, will, will be a little much. It'll be pushing it. <laughs> 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 
You ended up saying 90 minutes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 90 days, sorry. Uh, so, uh, you know, that thing is gone. So the first criticism has to be that, you know, the ECP has sacrificed uh, the strict requirement of elections within 90 days for something which uh, a lot of, uh, you know, lawyers, etc. say was not required by the Constitution. Then, uh, you know, there is the question of, you know, what kind of uh, delimitation has been done it's good that, you know, the Election Commission of Pakistan was able to complete at least the, uh, you know, initial exercise uh, in a few weeks earlier uh, than what was earlier expected. And, you know, from the ECP's own announcement, that may mean that, you know, the elections can now be held towards the end of uh, January instead of, uh, say, middle of February. Uh, of course, they will still be, you know, beyond the 90-day uh, limit. Uh, but uh, whatever, you know, uh, the uh, uh, the number of days that it's going over, however much they can be reduced, uh, that will be good. Now, there's, of course, the issue of, uh, you know, whether the quality of, uh, you know, delimitation, and of course, you know, that's going to be a long drawn process. This is just the initial report that has come out. And what is clear is that, you know, there will not be any uh, change in terms of, you know, the provincial proportion of seats because, you know, that would have required a constitutional amendment, which is not possible at this time because, you know, there's no assembly. Now, there are many people, you know, who uh, uh, wonder how it, you know, just magically happened that, you know, despite all the changes in population, you know, the number of uh, seats and the proportion of different provinces stays exactly the same and some are, you know, speculating, of course, it's a speculation whether, you know, this was kind of fixed because of the fact that there is no possibility of a constitutional amendment. But now, you know, the main issue will uh, start, you know, once, you know, the uh, detailed de delimitations are, you know, shared with the different parties and they have a better idea. Because even within the provinces, you know, there are a lot of, you know, political issues. There are the ethnic issues with the pro provinces, but then each of our province also has, you know, different regions, ethnic regions, and it's possible that, you know, there might be some sensitive changes there, especially in, you know, uh, Sindh, where is, you know, where there is this very clear urban and rural divide, which, of course, hides, you know, an ethnic uh, divide as well. So it's very early to say, you know, how, uh, you know, that's going to be received and what kind of problems, uh, you know, might come up with that. Uh, obviously, you know, there was a lot of time and energy and technology invested and a lot of claims have been made that, you know, this is the most accurate kind of census that has been ever uh, done in Pakistan. So we'll know pretty uh, soon, uh, but it's quite clear that, you know, the debate about uh, the timeliness of election is almost finished. You know, there was some hope from the new uh, chief justice that, you know, he may pursue this matter. But there is the fact that there are two or three cases pending in the Supreme Court about the need to hold uh, uh, elections in time and the Supreme Court, neither under the last Chief Justice or under the current Chief Justice, has bothered to, you know, take up those petitions. Right, absolutely. And we'll talk more about that as well. Ms. Patul, uh, considering, of course, that... Um, uh, this this number um, that uh, Dr. Niaz also referred to and that has been spoken about previously as well in terms of the requirement of a constitutional amendment seems to have been overcome and um, there uh, there are now the 336 seats um, as uh, per the 25th amendment as well. And I want to then understand, it, uh, it does seem that what the ECP has said is that um, there were specific guidelines followed, uh, but then uh, the, the number that, that has emerged seems uh, to point towards cases where perhaps certain cuts or certain clubbing measures um, would have been taken to ensure that the eventual outcome is 336. Do you think that would be the case? Um, uh, thank you so much. And now, uh, basically, the purpose of uh, this exercise was uh, actually to rationalize the population. Uh, it, its purpose was to keep uh, transparency uh, within the numbers about population of different areas. For example, we do have different areas, Kangu, Talagang, Mari, Jafarabad, and Sen, and some other areas. Uh, and those areas could not be declared as districts because of the, that particular uh, number of uh, population does not have to be declared as 
uh, district. So, so, so they are um, they are probably merged or declared independently. So these are the uh, very minute changes that we can see in this uh, development. But the but we won't be seeing any uh, change in the number of the national assembly seats uh, because for that you have to have. Uh, uh, the, uh, the the uh, elected parliament that we don't have at this very moment, but primarily after 25th amendment, uh, the total national assembly seats are 336 because uh, the 12 were FATA from FATA they were merged within KPK assembly and the total seats of national assembly become 336. Um, in, in in this particular new list of delimitation, um, uh, with which constitutes the the new face of national assembly it says that there are 60 reserved seats for women 10 for non-muslims from sin it's 61 from kpk it's 45 from the lower 16 Islamabad 3 and it is it is uh, it is done by this formula the total number of population is divided by the general seat per quota seat so 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 this is the formula now uh, because of which this whole uh, on the of which this whole exercise is being done and the most important thing is that it, it has happened for the first time in the history of Pakistan it is based on the digital census that we experienced uh, countrywide and uh, the, the, there was a electoral rearrangement within the uh, institution the 2023 digital census is a significant step towards election and it is one of the milestones that we have actually achieved as nation because after that we have to see that, um, that at least um, there will not be any confusion about uh, the, the list. And it, it is one of the most prime steps that, that should have been taken years ago, but, but, but even at this very moment, it is very encouraging. Um, don't forget that uh, at this very moment, that this, this whole exercise uh, was, uh, was done um, in a comparatively speedy way on demand of uh, uh, different political parties when they were mm, when when they wanted election commission to be aggressive about the mayor supposed to take about elections uh, and because of that we saw uh, a, a cut or uh, the, the 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 deadline of the list of delimitation it was uh, cut short so I think this step is very encouraging it is moving the country towards elections and we have to have patience at, at this very moment when I speak to different experts on this particular matter about um, the delimitation of uh, M.S. Dalal moved writes brilliantly on the issue. He said that at this very moment, we have to have this understanding that it is the only election commission who is supposed to have, uh, supposed to announce the date. And the, the other institutions, they are uh, they need to look up to election commission exercise. The political parties are supposed to get up uh, for election. And I think the things are, uh, the, the are in the right direction. If uh, if they need f few more months, I think it not hurt anybody or any institution in the country. But this is a milestone. This is very encouraging, and I think it is done without any confusion. Particularly after CCI meeting, we can debate all over what Pakistan People's Party said about uh, the, the new delimitations. But at this very moment, I think it is it is done before time. Uh, I hope transparency, with, with full transparency, and I hope that uh, the whole exercise is going to speed up the process towards election. Right. Um, Faisal, the situation, uh, given, of course, uh, the concerns that um, we were previously discussing before the preliminary delimitations were actually announced of uh, different political parties, of course, also with, with, with the number of seats and the, the way that they're going to be representing their um, historical strongholds um, in Pakistan. And I want you to um, take a look at this in terms of the different political parties and help us understand um, if you think there can possibly be any major objections to the preliminary delimitations de de as we see it now. Yes, and I, I believe uh, the first challenge which would be uh, appearing from would be from Karachi, of course, and uh, that too from, uh, uh, of course, uh, MTM Pakistan. They will be challenging it. And uh, I think uh, uh, the replies by now must, must have been prepared by election commission as well because uh, they must be expecting it uh, from mm. uh, their side because they keep on maintaining that the population which uh, has been uh, you know, uh, uh, shown uh, by the election commission, they contest it and they say that uh, two major cities of, uh, uh, 
uh, obviously Sindh province, I'm talking about uh, Hyderabad and Karachi, both of them, uh, according to MQM Pakistan, the population has uh, risen to a number where, of course, the seats should be increased as well and the delimitation uh, process should be of that nature where it is accepted uh, to uh, the population uh, of Karachi and Hyderabad. Number one, and uh, then if we come towards further, uh, uh, obviously Punjab side, I am expecting that a uh, few of the challenges would be made from uh, uh, the South Punjab. And uh, then if we come more uh, towards the North of Punjab, uh, I am, uh, I, I believe that the population which is uh, shown of uh, Talagang, it, it would be contested, it would be uh, challenged because uh, the constituency which they want to club it with, of course, that is uh, uh, traditionally of uh, uh, Chakwal uh, and uh, Chakwal district. And then Ch from Talagang to Chakwal, it's, a, it's a, uh, a distance which is quite long. And of course, they want their constituencies to be uh, separate from them. It right. will be contested. And if we further talk about, of course, there is uh, uh, you know, uh, the number of seats of uh, traditional FATA, it used to be 12th, and now they have uh, gone to uh, six. <coughs> to me, I believe, uh, of course, them six uh, seats that are uh, going to be included into KP province, uh, they might need uh, another look into, and it will be challenged from them Why as well. Because of the population and because and the of the area. Well. Yeah. yeah the area uh, of uh, obviously the bordering area mm. the fata area it's uh, of uh, you know that nature of course they will be seeking uh, another look into it and these are the challenges that we might be seeing coming up uh, in uh, coming days but if we talk about the major uh, political parties uh, like uh, people's party pti or uh, pmln I don't think uh, from within the central Punjab or interior uh, Sindh or, uh, you know, elsewhere in KPK, there will be any troubles. All right. Um, Farooq, the um, circumstances in which um, uh, the clubbing of different districts has been imposed uh, by the ECP points towards um, uh, them moving forward in a way that helps the representation of the different districts in the different assemblies. But I want to know whether that can also be counterproductive uh, in, in certain aspects, in ways in which, in which when we club different districts, um, in fact, that is something that, that hampers their representation. Uh, right, uh, Sana, uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much. And I was listening to most of our uh, you know, participants. So I, I thought that I would actually um, uh, uh, compliment them that most of the ground has already been covered mm -hmm. uh, but I uh, wanted to actually regarding your question mm -hmm. uh, uh, just uh, one correction not clubbing of uh, uh, you know districts per se it is actually redistricting right okay. and uh, constituencies are actually according to um, um, according to the population changes population keeps on changing so they have to keep track of that as well uh, but uh, regarding the way uh, things are going uh, I'm no expert on, uh, you know, delimitations. I think that I will love to hear from uh, bodies like the the one uh, Batul mentioned, like Pildat, or for that matter, Fafan. Uh, but uh, my concern is that when you look at uh, uh, the population changes and the fact that then we are not changing the total number of seats, mm -hmm. we are not increasing it. Uh, for uh, a living document, Pakistan's... Uh, a constitution seems to have become very, uh, very rigid, and this is a cause for concern. Because when you look at uh, the uh, constituencies that we are talking about at this moment, Sana, they are essentially we are discussing the constituencies that are going to send their, uh, you know, um, MPs or uh, MNAs to uh, to the federal assembly, national assembly, right? And here you have a big problem. Uh, because uh, uh, our parliament is a bicameral parliament. Mm -hmm. It has two houses. Uh, one is a popular house, the other one is uh, a territorial house. So the federating units uh, together get equal share in the territorial house the, where you have equal number of senators. But when you talk about the uh, popular house, the whole point there has to be that population actually, every addition to population shows there. Right. 
uh, that means that if last time you had census, the population was, uh, you know, three crore uh, yeah, less than what it is now, uh, uh, the constituencies or the, the district that have got more population should get more representation, right? Balochistan keeps on saying that they have far lesser seats. Similarly, uh, just mentioned by Faisal, uh, the, the case of Pata is interesting because it is not only um, uh, an area that has been merged into Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, but it, ha it was coddled for quite some time. So these changes, and because we had to actually ensure that because the uh, majority is not there in the parliament, that's why uh, you know two third majority we cannot change that, and that's why seats cannot be changed. These issues should not be that difficult to handle, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the uh, earlier Dr. Saab was mentioning 90 days, uh, and I totally am with him that we have actually failed that deadline. And uh, I wish that there was some kind of uh, leniency or some kind of flexibility in the Constitution regarding that. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, second thing about living documents, Sana, or laws, is that they are supposed to be such that they cannot be accidentally or easily broken with ignorance, right? When you, you, do, you give a date and you don't provide for any kind of human element mm -hmm. or a human failure, let me give you an example. Dr. Saab also mentioned the uh, you know end of Jul uh, January date, right? That is being mentioned, and of course uh, the election commission has also uh, you know uh, promised that the elections are likely to be held there. So my question is, when you talk about Gilgit Baltistan, uh, sorry, no, uh, places like Chitral, mm -hmm. Mari, uh, or m uh, other mountainous areas, including Balochistan, where the uh, weather is going to be sub-zero at that time. Yeah. Um, uh, is the uh, election commission of Pakistan going to dispatch some kind of special heated vehicles to transport people there? Not really, right? Very important. So, point. so with that kind of yeah. unrealistic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the deadlines or dates, you they are bound to be broken. There is going yeah. to be delay in that as well. Yeah. Why is it that our constitution has made it impossible? to bring about changes which are reflective of people's uh, uh, ability uh, to vote and uh, represent themselves. And uh, regarding, fi finally, regarding uh, this uh, delimitation issue also in Karachi, it, uh, it was a huge concern. Mm -hmm. During the last census, it was MKM and Karachiites who kept on complaining that the entire country's population is increasing. Mm -hmm. It is the only city whose population seems to be decreasing. This time it has been actually addressed, right? Makes no sense. Why, why would it decrease when the, uh, you know, most of the people want to tend to go to big cities mm -hmm. and Karachi is the biggest of them all. So why would people stop going there, right? Uh, with that kind of a situation on mind, I think that we need bigger issues to discuss, but I'm glad at least we are, uh, at least uh, the election commission has shown through delimitation that we are at least moving towards an election and all those naysayers or conspiracy theorists who kept on saying that we are going to end up with a caretaker set up for two years, they might be proven wrong. True. All right. Dr. Niyaz Matissa, there, there is of course uh, the factors that uh, Farooq has uh, outlined and they are of course extremely valid in terms of the execution of these timelines, uh, but uh, this concern around whether or not this time frame that has been given by the ECP will actually be fulfilled or not is something that uh, has also been echoed um, uh, previously as well. And I want to understand possibly what sort of areas do you think are, are perhaps not still being looked at in terms of um, what can happen um, under the pretext of which the elections can possibly still be delayed, uh, even if the delimitations are processed, even if all objections are actually carried forward and resolved. Um, do you think that there is anything else that uh, can actually stop the elections uh, from being held in this time frame? Well, no, I think uh, there does seem to be a momentum uh, towards, you know, holding elections uh, uh, sooner rather than later, but still beyond uh, the 90-day limit. I think there are many factors that are, you know, pushing uh, Pakistan towards that. Uh, there is, you know, the economic crisis and the fact that, you know, we have to have a new IMF deal in place once this nine-month uh, thing expires. I think there is also some international pressure 
related to that and that pressure can be applied uh, through you know uh, the uh, IMF deal uh, internally too I think uh, there aren't many players who are pushing for you know much longer delays because you know political parties of course you know the longer elections are delayed the longer they you know uh, remain out of power so eventually uh, even you know uh, PA, PTI of course is the one party that is in the most hurry and you know the reason for that is clear also from you know this Gallup poll that came out which shows that you know Imran Khan has 60% uh, favorability uh, rating which is you know almost double uh, the next person uh, but even you know uh, with PMLN and PPP there is the realization that you know more the elections are delayed they'll be out of power uh, so uh, eventually I think uh, I don't see uh, you know a huge delay uh, but of course you know there are the smaller things about you know how you will hold elections in the north uh, in the peak of the winter uh, those things, of course, ECP will have to look at, you know, especially for women. Uh, you know, these are also the areas in which, you know, the participation of women is usually lower uh, northern uh, Pakistan. And now if you have, you know, the winter and snow, it will be more difficult for them to come out with their children and so on. So, you know, what mechanism is uh, ECP going to, you know, uh, apply? That will be interesting to look at. But in terms of, you know, uh, more conflicts, uh, uh, you know, this is all very nitty-gritty uh, stuff. Uh, uh, MQM might have that, as Faisal was saying, but then, you know, MQM's uh, complaints are against the census itself. Once you, uh, and, the, and the census wasn't done by the ECP, the census was done by the statistics department. What ECP will be doing is, you know, assuming that, you know, the census is fine as it is, and then doing, you know, uh, the delimitations based on that census. So, uh, you know, uh, if MQM has not raised complaints or has not been uh, successful in getting them addressed about the census itself, it will be difficult for it to, you know, reintroduce them at the level of uh, the delimitation uh, exercise. At the delimitation exercise, what can happen is, you know, the number of seats for, say, South Punjab versus North Punjab, rural sin versus uh, uh, urban sin uh, uh, but uh, then it's more about you know uh, nitty gritty stuff where you know the boundaries of each constituencies are laid out which villages get uh, included here versus the next constituency it's all uh, you know a lot of nitty gritty stuff and that you know once the detailed maps come out then will uh, you know the parties uh, be able to figure out how it's going to affect them and then there is the question of whether you they have sufficient information at the constituency level to figure out whether you know this village here, this village there makes any difference to them. So ultimately, I don't think there'll be a big hoopla uh, which could delay the elections in terms of you know the delimitations. It will get done. Uh, but what is the fact is that you know elections will not be held within you know the 90 days limit, and that will be another constitutional aberration, one and after another that we've been having for the last 12 to 15 months. Right, Ms. Patul, this is important, especially given, of course, that the foundation um, on which the preliminary delimitations are based is the actual census results. And I want to then understand that um, when we take a look at where we stand today and the way that the, uh, the timeline seem to be moving forward, despite perhaps aspects which haven't been cleared by all or accepted by all, um, it, it seems then um, a, a question mark whether or not this is something then that uh, will be in the future um, largely ignored and accepted uh, since we have actually moved on or do you think that possibly then this foundation can actually create trouble or that somebody can actually uh, raise an issue about it at this point um, given of course that the delimitations process is, has already continued based on the new census results uh, will it be possible for anyone now to raise any objection on the census results and could that have an impact on this future process? Uh, sir, actually I have been talking extensively to experts about this issue that uh, um, will it be difficult for political parties to uh, accept the delimit results? The the, and the, um, I put that the political parties, they have not been very difficult about the, this kind of we have seen some objections and reservations uh, from the community. Uh, 
election passed um, during uh, the mayor election in Karachi, uh, they, they, most of their residents were educated for multiple accounts. When they voted, uh, the reason was not considered by the court. So, uh, this, this is not that, but, uh, I don't think so. Any part maybe influence the digital senses. Example that I and spoke to the relevant uh, experts. They said that in, uh, in even past uh, the objections and reservations, they the they become very active. They in fact they become proactive and they try to um, uh, sort with for days. So it has never never been an issue. Uh, for uh, sorted out quickly. They have been um, sorted out quickly in the past as well. But yes. Uh, about about execution, um, uh, it is very much understandable that why is it there? National parties, it is not in Pakistan. Um, uh, there is a security issue. There is a there is an issue now. that as narrative So I believe that we are heading towards election, but what what what? Impact of uncertainty. It is not, which is available. But but I, in or no in Pakistan, the sense granted it cannot. I think All right. the state um, stagnant for much for elections and they will be done. Right, Dr. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Batul, for joining us. And thank you very much, Dr. Niaz Mirza, for thank joining you. us and being part of the discussion. Farooq, similarly, of course, when we talk about the census, um, there is, of course, that issue of 90 days that has been discussed earlier in terms of that already being crossed. Does that mean that since we have actually just gone beyond that time frame, um, whatever perhaps is uh, the move forward by the courts or, uh, or uh, whatever is then per, uh, understood as per the constitution will no longer be relevant and will not be um, uh, carried out in the best interests of the country because since we would have already progressed forward? Uh, right, uh, Sena, I, I will not like to speculate on what the courts are going to do. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, this is a strictly uh, a matter of interpretation and Supreme Court in the past has actually declared that it doesn't have the power to extend this kind of dates. So I don't know what exactly happens in the uh, in the uh, coming days. But uh, it's but a possibility. Uh, I don't want to speculate because once again, uh, this time after s uh, a small interval, I have a Supreme Court that I implicitly, uh, you know, trust and believe in. So I think that it is their call. If they want to do something, they will do it. Uh, my concern is more regarding the Election Commission of Pakistan right now because at this moment there seems to be many things that are going on right um, on one side of course is the uh, hard uh, realities of election where election commission has to start delivering <coughs> but uh, learning from the experience of 2018 when media was kind of hijacked by one temperament regarding pti being the only party that has to be there and pmln not being uh, not amount to something at all now, there seems to be another kind of jugaad that is going on. Uh, a, a huge part of media, uh, particularly led by one media group, is virtue signaling daily that uh, it is PMLN that, ha that has become an inevitable material, right? And there seems to be um, an uh, ecosystem that supports that kind of idea uh, coming from the same reporters or anchors then go and they start actually their podcast or their YouTube channels, and they're also they're spreading the same kind of thing. It is important to ask election commission who uh, is uh, a PEMRA reporting to at this moment, right? There has to be a significant monitoring or the way, uh, you know, election might be influenced by certain, uh, you know, uh, speculations that are there. It is important that uh, when you talk about transparency of the elections, elections have to be transparent, right? All this uh, grand narrative that this person has been appointed and now he's going to be anointed and then there's going to be, there are going to be two regents who are going to actually control everything. Mm. This undermines the spirit of constitution and, and all this movement or motion that we are going through, right? It is important that you establish that the country's democracy at least uh, 
has some principles in place where people <coughs> don't monopolize, where they don't actually, uh, uh, you know, just for their financial benefits, they don't actually manipulate the elections. So this is what I had to say. Thank All you. right. Um, we're going to be now moving on to our next segment, which takes a look at <coughs> the statement given by the Foreign Office uh, regarding Pakistan's stance on Israel-Palestine. And Faisal, this is something that Pakistan has not uh, uh, talked about the first time. We have we've reiterated our stance many times in the past, even previously as well. Um, there was a lot of speculation surrounding whether or not Pakistan and Israel are going to be developing any uh, ties. And this is something that, again, has been clarified by both the Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister. Uh, but why do you think that this concern um, is being raised or uh, that there was a need uh, for this clarification, again, to be given when our stance hasn't changed? Sana, uh, you know, very sadly on the social media and uh, of course a uh, few of the YouTube channels, it is being speculated by many voices that uh, now when of course Israel is in the talks with Saudi Arabia and it is believed that Pakistan of course, uh, uh, you know, behind the curtains is part of it as well. Hmm. And sadly enough, it's yet another fake news which of course uh, affects Pakistan as a country. It, it was very important uh, step by the Foreign Office to, of course, uh, reiterate the facts. And the facts are that Pakistan is not going to recognize Israel as a state uh, in this world until unless they uh, come to a solution mm. uh, in accordance with the United Nations resolutions, in accordance to the OIC's resolutions, which state that of course Israel need to go back to its pre-1967 position uh, in terms of the borders and of course uh, Palestine gets Jerusalem as its uh, capital city and one more thing the expansion I mean Israel expanded like a plague in Palestine the expansions which took place after 1967 in terms of you know uh, uh, different developments which were created uh, by the force the brute force which was used by israel all of them they should be handed back to the people that belong to of course i'm talking about the palestinians and that is what the pakistan's position is pakistan is maintaining it till that happens pakistan will never accept israel as a state Okay, um, Farooq, uh, there, there seems to be um, a, a pointing towards um, meetings with several Muslim countries, mm -hmm. um, uh, potentially normalizing ties with Israel. Whether or not, of course, any meeting amounts to that is different, but I want to understand, um, hypothetically, given a world where there is an increase um, of, of relationships between uh, different Muslim countries and Israel, do you think that increasingly, in general, it will become difficult for Pakistan to be able to maintain such a stance when perhaps other Muslim countries are doing otherwise? Right. Uh, Sana, I think Pakistan for uh, its entire, entire life has actually maintained that kind of position. But remember, countries that are very close to Pakistan, uh, right from, uh, uh, you know, Turkey to UAE, have actually already established their links, mm. right? Uh, Pakistan has had its own populist worldview and of course, which is kind of sort of represented by my brother here as well, uh, who, uh, whose uh, talk actually reminded me of something that we used to see on shops, uh, Kashmir ke azadi tak udhar band hai. Udhar band. Uh, until for Kashmir is freed, we are not going to lend you any money, <laughs> right? Uh, so that, uh, uh, so th it, there are so many uh, abstract demands in what he was mm. saying that uh, perhaps there, there isn't going to be any kind of establishing of relations. My concern is I understand the government's uh, uh, reluctance to, you know, endorse any kind of idea where Pakistan can have uh, any kind of diplomatic relations with uh, Israel for that matter. But uh, just because I'm not talking to you doesn't mean that you're not there, right? Uh, my, my biggest concern is that uh, and, uh, you know, uh, diplomatic relations or at least tacit, uh, you know, uh, contacts uh, don't amount to endorsing your position. Uh, for example, uh, this uh, matter does not actually directly relate to Pakistan. There is another one which is very close to us, that is Kashmir. Yeah. Have you broken away, uh, you know, the, the diplomatic relations with India until Kashmir is freed? We haven't, right? Mm -hmm. Similarly, Myanmar kept on killing people. 
and uh, there were hundreds of thousands of people, uh, you know, Muslims who had to flee that country. And they are actually hiding in plain sight, right, in many places and very difficult circumstances. Have we said that until you have actually uh, brought back the Rohingyas, uh, till that time we are not going to, you know, uh, talk to you or we are not going to have diplomatic relations? Um, uh, the biggest problem with Pakistan is that Pakistan has the lobbying power to go anywhere and to any country from Russia, China, America, uh, where when it comes to weapon procurement, Pakistan can do it. There's one country because we don't recognize it. India keeps on killing us there because India goes there. India procures all the technologies, maybe uh, uh, software or hardware, advanced software or hardware, and we can't do much about it. So my concern is that we have to decide what we are running. Is it a state? Is it a government? Is it a country? Or do, are we, uh, you know, are running an ideological block? And why is it that we are more loyal than the Pope? If Saudis and Arabs, they are all Arabs, by the way, right? Uh, Egypt is Arab, uh, Saudi Arabia is Arab, there are umpteen other countries, uh, and UAE is Arab. Uh, we are not Arabs. But if they are, uh, you know, establishing relationship, mm. why is it that it becomes such a difficult concept to you know, inhale. I have a fear. Okay. I have a fear that there are people who keep on, uh, you know, um, pumping in this kind of sentiment because it benefits them. They, uh, they used to be, Saudis used to have an influence and there was a time when Saudis actually uh, thought Israel is one of the worst things in the universe. Uh, Iran is another. Then India, because India benefits from Pakistan not talking to Israel. Uh, India always uses that to actually further its Islamophobia because uh, Israel has quite a, a lot of influence. So I'm not saying recognize or don't recognize. I'm not saying that the government did a wrong thing. All I'm saying is that we have to realize that if you want to be a nation state, you have to live with uh, certain realities mm -hmm. and at least there's no harm in discussing it. Mm -hmm. Right, Thank absolutely. You. Thank yes, you, Farooq. Uh, Thank you, Faisal, mm -hmm. for joining us and being a part of the discussion. Of course, there is a lot of uh, concern surrounding what actually happens in Pakistan in terms of the election, and we've discussed that at length, um, and we're going to be, of course, seeing that in the coming days as it progresses. And, of course, with regards to our stance on Israel and Palestine, we've been fair in the past, and this has been reiterated again by the Foreign Office. That's all that we have from the debate today. We'll be seeing you tomorrow.